Hello everybody and welcome to a new playthrough of RimWorld. This is a game I have been playing a lot of uh, recently. I just picked up this game maybe a couple of months ago so I'm still pretty new and still learning new things but uh, it's been a lot of fun so I want to make a playthrough of it for this channel. Um, so far I've been playing with the Royalty, Ideology, and Biotech DLCs but for this playthrough I just picked up the Anomaly DLC as well. Um, so I haven't experienced anything from this DLC yet, so some of this stuff may come as a surprise for me and we'll be learning as we go. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Let's create a new colony. For this, I've created a custom start. Um, I'm going to start tribal, but I don't like that the tribal start normally starts with five tribes people, so we're going to start with two instead. I, I like starting with a small number of people and then growing my colony kind of gradually over time. Um, in addition, we're not going to be starting with a whole bunch of extra resources. We're just going to be starting with a bow, a knife, and a dog. And that's it. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to choose normal mode, reload any time, and uh, Cassandra Classic. Yeah, I think we're going to stick with Cassandra Classic. Like I said, I'm still pretty new to this game, so I'm not trying to challenge myself overly because that is going to be a sure way to get this series ended. <laughs> within a few episodes. I'm prone to making mistakes. Um, as far as factions, what I like to do is I like to get rid of these, these, uh, I don't know, like Yitakin pirates. Oops. We can add back in the waster pirates. I don't mind them. Um, and then I'm, I like to add in a bunch of human factions back. So cannibal tribe, nudist tribe, fierce tribe, savage tribe. And yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, I like to add in all these human factions back so that we have um, more humans who come to raid us rather than other species because ultimately I mainly would just recruit from the humans anyways. So we're going to go ahead and generate this world. And you guys can see the mods. I don't use a lot of mods. I just have this mod replace stuff, Fahrenheit and Celsius and basic double doors. Um, replace stuff just lets me, like it says, replace stuff without having to destroy, uh, destroy the tile first. Um, Fahrenheit and Celsius just gives me temperatures in Fahrenheit, so it's a more easy uh, for me to understand because I live in the United States. Um, so Celsius means nothing to me. Um, and then Double Doors, it does exactly what it sounds like. I think we're going to play in someplace cold because my most recent playthrough that I've been doing on my own time has been in the extreme desert, and I feel like I need to get out of the heat. Um, I do like temperate forest starts. I've tried boreal forest and it just, it wasn't, I didn't like how marshy the ground was. So I think we're gonna stick with temperate forest and we're gonna go uh, one of these places in the far north. It's kind of nice having a river here as well. Um, why don't we start here? We have marble and limestone. We've got a large river running through it. We've got an eastern coast. If we go into advanced options, I'm just going to choose the slightly larger of the two medium maps. Um, I just like to have a little more uh, space and room. Um, and as far as ideology, we're going to create a custom fluid ideology. That means that we only have to pick one meme to start with and we can grow it kind of as we go. Um, and I prepared for this, um, I prepared for this episode by coming up with a preset um, religion that we're going to use. It uses the um, human prim primacy uh, meme. So if I go ahead and load it in, the path of Azim. Um, it's got two deities, a master of creation and a master of death. We're using Hindu aesthetics. Uh, we are embodied theist. Human primacy basically just establishes humans as the moral center of the universe. The universe was created for humans and humans are the masters of the universe. Um, our precepts, nothing too unusual, you know, execution is respected, guilty, um, everything else is pretty standard. Um, roles, we have a, a grand chief, a cleric, and I don't remember choosing these in my preset. Let's go ahead and rename these. I don't like these names. Let's name this to the high priest or high priestess. Um, why don't we call the moral guide an oracle? They can wear a cape. I don't mind these clothing. Um, and why don't we make our production specialist called a maker? Sounds a little better than make knower. 
Um, and then let's see, in terms of rituals, we have a funeral, we have a social festival. Sure, Azamite Advent. Um, and let's have it, sure, the 1st of April, maybe. We can, we can celebrate spring. Um, and then we have an animal sacrifice, immolation of creation, offering of creation. I like the sound of that. All right, we've got a shrine, we've got a meal pillow, and we can probably incorporate um, a large sculpture into our religion as well. Image of life, sure. Barracks is trying, Neil Pillow. Uh, we've got two relics, and yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's see who our options are. Now, when you start with only two colonists, um, you can't possibly have them be good at everything that you need done. They can't be good at cooking, and construction, and growing, and intellectual, and social. So you're gonna have some gaps, and we're gonna fill in those gaps. I like to pick my first two colonists more on their health traits and their traits and whether or not they're incapable of work. I think those are the more important things than what their passions and actual skills are. Um, because we can ultimately grow them and we can grow their skills um, in, any, in any needed ways. Um, I do need to make sure that they can fight though. When you only have two colonists, both of them really need to be able to fight and hold their own in a raid. Okay, so let's see who our options are. We have Eel. Undergrounder, chemical fascination, I hate both of those traits. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Eel down here and we're just not even gonna consider this guy. Undergrounder means he's gonna be pissed off every time he has to go outside when it's like the sun is out. Chemical fascination means this guy's gonna be into drugs all the time. Um, okay, so let's look at our next option. Manyaka, decent shot. Um, okay at melee, pretty bad, but uh, let's see. Fast walker. Nimble and annoying voice. So others will probably, she probably won't get along with others because of her annoying voice, but um, she can hold her own in a fight and fast walker and nimble are two pretty awesome traits. She's 24, no pre-existing health conditions. We'll consider her. We've got Basculo who is, again, I think six and four. Yeah, the same with shooting in melee, though this person will improve at shooting a lot faster. Undergrounder. Gourmand, cooking plus four, but hunger rate times 150. I don't like it. And incapable of caring. So this person can't heal up if we need to. Um, this person is incapable of nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and put Basculo down here with Eel. I don't think we're interested in him. Let's see what's up with Hippo. Um, again, pretty okay at both shooting and melee. Very neurotic. What does that mean? Okay, they work fast, but they're also more prone to mental breaks. Okay, that's a fair trade-off. They're incapable of caring. So this person's not as bad as the other one, but we're, we probably won't end up taking this person, especially because their skills really low and everything except for mining, which just isn't that important in the beginning of the game. Uh, we've got Lebarv. Beautiful. Ascetic. What does this mean? He will be happy if he has a bedroom... He will be unhappy if he has a bedroom that's too impressive. He also dislikes fancy food and prefers to eat raw. He never judges others by their appearance. All right, this guy likes to eat um, raw food. He doesn't want an impressive bedroom. This sounds like an easy guy and he's beautiful. Um, iron willed, mental break threshold. Okay, so he, have, he will have less mental breaks and he's actually decent at plants. So far, I like this guy. Again, um, Nimble is a good melee trait, but for the time being, we can arm this person with a gun. We can arm this person with um, a melee weapon. Uh, let's see, we also have one more to look at, Barrow. Barrow has a lot of passion, shooting, melee, mining, cooking, crafting, and social, and actually has decent skills. The only issue is that uh, he is volatile. Mental break threshold plus 15%, global certainty loss factor 300%. Okay, so he'll be having a lot of mental breaks. He might be the better option than this guy. Because he can do... 
He can do melee as well, but he's actually got a lot more rounded out skills. His only issue is that he's volatile. I like these traits a little better though. We can always grow this person's traits. Okay, we're gonna pick this in. A 30 year old male, a 24 year old female named Menyaka, and oh, I can't pronounce this, Lebarve. It sounds weird, so I'm just gonna say Tranka. That's gonna be easier for me to pronounce. We're gonna call them by their last names. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start. Your tribe was destroyed and its members all killed or sold into slavery. This particular couple managed to escape into the wilderness and seek to rebuild their prosperous tribe. All right, and so we shall. Let's see what's going on on our map. We have an eastern shore. We have a river that runs right through the middle of the map. It might be fun to build our base around this river, though defending our base across the river might be kind of difficult. Because I don't know, we'd have to build wall um, bridges with walls on top of the bridges. Not very secure. I think what's probably a far better option is going to be building our base up and around here, kind of using this natural cover until we can build walls of our own. In fact, we have a huge plot of fertile land right here that I think we need to take advantage of. And we have a pre-existing structure that we can live in for the time being until we get our own structure up and built. We have another one right here. This actually is not a bad place. Okay, so we know where we're gonna start. We're gonna start up and around here. Um, let's look for one more thing before we uh, consider this. Where is our anima tree? Because we are tribal, so if we want to ignore the empire and its request and instead of ascending through the empire's um, feudal ranks we can pray at the anima tree the anima tree is kind of far away from where we want to be so we might not send people to meditate there too often i don't think it's going to be worth traveling all the way down there to meditate um, you guys can let me know in the comments if you disagree with any of these choices by the way um, i'm always willing to take your guys' suggestions especially in a game like this that i'm kind of in um, new territory here. I'm not super familiar with this game. I think we're gonna set up camp in this place first because it's really close to the fields where we want to be and then we can kind of co op this structure as well if we want to later. Um, I believe we don't start with stone cutting. No, we don't. Okay, so we're gonna have to build everything out of wood for the time being. All right, let's. Um, we only have two things. We have a knife and a bow. So let's go ahead and assign them their weapons. This is shooting six melee four. This is shooting four melee eight. Hmm. The obvious choice would be to put this guy on melee and this person on shooting. But the fact of the matter is, is they both have a minor passion and both skills and they can learn. I want to give this person melee because the fast walker and nimble trait are great for a melee. They can get to the front line really quickly with fast walker and melee means that they're dodging a lot. Okay, I'm going to give Manyaka a jade knife and I'm going to give Tranka the bow. And um, we're going to use this automatically assigned work priorities for now until we have a few more colonists. Because it doesn't really matter, we're going to be micromanaging our two colonists anyways. First order of business is we need to create a growing zone, right? We only have 30 out of 60 growing days in a year. So we really want to get this started right up from the beginning. In fact, this field is probably a little bigger than what we ultimately need, but we're going to err on the side of having too much food rather than not enough food. We do want to stockpile a bit. Um, we are going to grow rice. I think rice will give us a fast harvest because we don't start with any food of our own. Um, and then we need to harvest some berry bushes. So I'm going to go to orders, chop wood, we'll get some wood so we can start building um, building up around these walls. Um, and then if there's any berry bushes for us to harvest, I see a few more here. We'll go ahead and pick those berries so we can eat them. I think we can probably also create a dumping zone temporary 
I don't know where we're ultimately going to want this dumping zone to go. But we need to get these stones out of our growing zone. So I think we're going to put a dumping zone here for now. Let's actually see what our skills are. Who's actually good at construction? Two and three. Nobody's good at construction. Um, who's good at cooking? Nobody's good at cooking. Maybe I should have given a little credence to skills. At least we have a good grower. That's important. And a good plant cutter. Um, decent crafting. We don't need any art for the time being. That's probably not going to be much. Research. Two and three. And then if we need to recruit someone, how are our social skills? Warden. Three. Zero. Okay, our social skills are lacking. We're going to have to recruit in a lot of talent here. But all is well. We're going to go ahead and go into structure. And we're going to build in some wooden walls around this kind of broken down structure. And I think we're going to kind of square it out. We can harvest some steel from these parts of the structure that we don't need anymore. Manyoka has noticed a nearby ancient monolith partly buried. If I investigate it, I could learn more. I don't know if I want to investigate it. I think this is probably something with the new DLC. So I'm going to wait until we're a little more established and ready for whatever this is. Why is there a corpse here? Dead for 1.5 years. Interesting that they start off with a corpse. We can strip it to get some herbal medicine. All right. It's a pretty good deal. And in here, we're going to try to deconstruct all of these unnecessary steel walls to clear out some space. It comes with a free table. It comes with two columns that I don't think we need. We can probably get rid of these. And we can probably think about um, reinstalling these somewhere. Let's claim this and let's reinstall it um, here just to get out of the way. We should probably build a campfire in here too once we get this all this base all set up. I'm hoping that our husky doesn't need us to hunt meat for it and that it can kind of hunt for itself for the time being. If it starts to starve, we might just let it die. Not ideal, poor dog, but we gotta feed ourselves too. We're kind of a desperate situation right now. Feeding humans is more important than feeding dogs. All right. Our pawns are having a little meditate, midday meditate to refill their recreation bar. That's good. Now that we have an indoor place, let's go ahead and go to furniture. And until we can get some leather for sleeping rolls, for bed rolls, we're going to just have sleeping spots in here. Okay, um, we'll put the two sleeping spots, I guess, toe-to-toe -to -toe here at the back of the cabin. It's starting to get dark, but we've already made good progress on planting our first harvest of rice. There we go, we're all set up in here. If I go to temperature, we can probably build a campfire in here as well. But I don't think it's worth wasting the wood on that yet. We don't need the light, we don't need to cook any food because we don't have any food to cook. And we don't need the heat, it's not cold just yet. It's 54 degrees out, a nice balmy 54. Okay, Manyaka should be building up her construction skill. Yeah, she's already level two. She'll she'll learn over time. She'll become a great constructor. We're gonna go ahead and create a stockpile zone in our cabin, just on the floor. It's not gonna look great. We're gonna have junk all over the floor, but for the time being, we gotta do what we gotta do. 
my Nyaka up to? Deconstructing this pillar, which is taking her forever. Okay. We're about one third of the way towards level three construction. That's good. Um, while we have this herbal medicine ready to harvest, we should probably also give it an order to harvest it as well. Starvation. Okay. First order of business in the morning. Let's go to their health tab. They both have malnutrition. We might want to wake them up. Manyaka? Tronka is our harvester. I need you to prioritize harvesting this berry bush, this berry bush, this berry bush, and this berry bush. Oh, it didn't queue up. I meant to queue up all of them. There we go. Okay, so Tronka shouldn't be starving anymore. Until we get this first batch of rice, it's going to be a little touch and go. We can do some hunting as well. Um, in fact, it's probably going to be a smart idea. We we'll build a campfire, and after we do some hunting, we can uh, cook it up at the campfire. Berries might be able to see us through. There are a lot of berry bushes. Just need to travel far for them. Plenty of berry bushes. Okay. So once we have the food situation sorted out, we can start looking to creating a base that actually makes sense and is functional, but for the time being, we're just happy in this temporary shelter we built. A group of travelers from the Pact of Bornert passing by. Let's see if we can find them. Here they are. Do we want to try and kidnap anybody? That wouldn't be very nice. Yeah, I don't think we could take on a group of three armed travelers anyways. We will get new recruits eventually. I think we should go to orders, claim, and I think we should claim this entire structure. Okay, Manyaka can get on repairs. She's gonna be really slow because of her low construction skill. But that's fine for the time being. Tronka is busy cutting wood and we're gonna to wanna to move all this, haul all this wood into the stockpile zone as soon as we can. We have a lot of hauling to do. I'm gonna to try to not queue up too many more jobs. In fact, I don't think that, I don't think that this is important for us to do, hauling this stone. We don't even have stone cutting yet. We'll just leave it at the edge of our fields. It looks ugly, but it's actually not that bad. We have a bunch of stumps here that we can chop. Just a, a little bit of extra wood. Now we need to start thinking about food, so I'm going to go ahead and have Tronka prioritize harvesting some berry bushes up here. Prioritize harvesting, prioritize harvesting. There we go. We'll go ahead and build a campfire in the middle of our um, our hut as well. I think we have enough wood to afford it now. We can start cooking up food, simple meals, and let's do it until we have, say, 10 stockpiled. So if we have any extra berries or rice, we're going to be cooking them into meals, which I think are slightly more efficient um, in terms of feeding our colonists than just eating raw berries. Was one of our colonists acetic? Bio. Yes. Okay, so Tronka might still prefer to eat the raw food. Oh well, too bad for him. OK, 
Okay, let's see. Who is assigned to hunting? Manyaka is assigned to hunting. So Manyaka has a knife. Okay, so we need to change that around. We need Tronka to be assigned to hunting. Manyaka, we can take off of hunting since she's not even equipped with a hunting weapon. We'll go ahead and turn the game on super fast mode to skip over the night. Manyaka is right back to it, repairing everything that she sees. We should create some stools for them to eat at as well, so it doesn't drive them nuts eating without a, a chair. When you only have two colonists, one of them going into a mental break really, really, really is a huge setback. I regret having a dog. This dog might be useful in a raid situation, but for the time being, this dog is just an extra mouth to feed. Okay, our rice is about 20% grown. So we're about one fifth of the way there, about probably four more days. I think we should hunt this turkey and this tortoise as well. We can make a butcher spot. And I think we want to, or no, actually we should make a butcher table. I think butcher spots are inefficient. We're going to butcher outside so we don't bring the mess inside. We'll set the bill to butcher creature and do it forever. Okay, and then when we hunt these creatures, we should allow in our storage stockpile corpses, animal corpses. For everything though, we should only allow fresh, not rotten. We don't want any rotten animal corpses in our base. All right, I think we're starting to get on top of the food situation. I know we hunted a raccoon. I don't know what happened to that raccoon. Did it get eaten straight away? We have a visitor. She wants to trade a few items. All right, we can manage that. Who's good at social? Neither of them, but Manyaka is a little better. So we'll go ahead and trade with her. Um, Manyaka, wake up from your sleep. Let's see if we can do any trading. Um, not gonna lie, medicine would be pretty important at this point, but we don't have anything to sell in return. They don't want wood or steel or lizard skin or tortoise meat, which is pretty much all we have. So unfortunately, we can't do any trading. Curious. What is the effect of these urns on the room's beauty? They have five beauty each. That's actually not bad. We'll keep them in here. These urns are kind of nice. I wish you could build stuff like this and like these sandstone large steels and stuff like this. I wish we could have the option to build those in our bases. But if you want to keep them, you have to choose the claim and then reinstall that option. They've left us a gift, a muffalo wool authority cap and a cotton, a cotton face mask. All right. Seems like Tranka has decided that um, he wants to wear those. That's fine. Tranka's gonna keep getting us some more meat to feed us. Yeah, we have a couple more creatures and we should just keep hunting until we get our first harvest of rice. We're going to need to live on a largely carnivorous diet. going to harvest these berries up here. It's a bit of a trek, but we need all the food we can get. Manyaka has gotten food poisoning from being an incompetent cook. That checks out. We should probably remove the dirt floors in here because that's giving, making the room seem dirty, which is giving us a penalty to our cooking. Okay, we're gonna lay wooden floors. We have a ton of extra wood, so it costs us nothing. And in fact, we could start to get organized. Oh, we can't. 
I was gonna say we could build some wooden shelves, but we need to research furniture for that. So I think one of our early orders of business is going to be to build a research bench so we can fill up any, any free time we have, any spare time we have can be filled up with research. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure both of them are prioritizing research. There's a mad squirrel. Okay, it's far away. So we're gonna let that squirrel get a little closer before we start to try to deal with it. Okay. Now let's recruit them both. Um, in fact, Tranka, let's actually just let him be. My Nyaka and the Husky can deal with this mad rat. Okay, I'm gonna give him the order to attack the rat, and there we go. Rat is dealt with. He got two scratches. That's fine. They both need to be able to doctor. I know they both suck at it, so they can doctor each other. We have a lot of skills to recruit in. We're gonna be on the lookout when we get a raid. We should actually have a prison set up and ready for when we have a raid. Let's create a small prison off the side of our base here. So we can be ready to get raided. And capture these prisoners. So where is the ancient danger? Oh! We're right next to it. Interesting. <laughs> we built our, our base right next to an ancient danger. That doesn't sound like a good place to build a base. So once we have guns and several colonists, we'll try to open this up and see what's inside. Hopefully it will be some goodies. And with all this hunting, Tranka should be improving his shooting skill. He's already improved it from four to five. That's great. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And we should probably build an animal sleeping spot for our husky as well. You can sleep with uh, the humans over here. Okay, we're getting these wooden floors laid down. They're looking nice. Hopefully this is improving the room's cleanliness. Negative 1.19, very dirty. Oh well. For the research bench, I think we might need steel. We have the steel though. At least we should have the steel. All those walls we deconstructed, that only amounted to 29 steel. We need 25. Okay, so we have just enough. Alright, since it looks like you'll be here for a while, Tranka thinks that you should give your faction a name. Alright. Let's name ourselves, oops, I have caps lock on, the tribe of Aswar. I don't know. Um, and then I don't know why the settlement has a different name, so we'll just call it Aswar. That makes sense. Where the tribe of Aswar, our settlement can be named Aswar. And there we go. We're all set up. We're ready to receive prisoners if anyone decides to attack us. We are cooking meals. We have a small stockpile of meals. We should continue harvesting this medicine whenever we see it. And there's ambrosia growing nearby. We are going to not mess with that. I don't want any of our colonists getting addicted to drugs. Manyaka failed when constructing a research bench. That's not good at all. We've only got, let's see, a total of 16 steel left over. We can probably deconstruct one of these steel urns. Is there anything else steel that we can deconstruct? Granite, 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 limestone. Steel urn. We can deconstruct these steel urns. That's a granite urn, we don't need to deconstruct that. Try not to accumulate any resources we don't need, such as granite blocks, sandstone blocks. Like, what are we doing with these sandstone blocks? So I think our map was, what, marble and limestone? So we'll probably build most of our base out of limestone if we can swing it. Marble is 
great, but I think we're gonna leave marble for like art fixtures and stuff. Seems like limestone is a much more plentiful supply. There might be another ancient danger over here. Good to know. So since we're living in a cold climate, it might be worth trying to tame some alpacas. We need to grow some hay and build a pen for them. That should be next on our order of things to do because alpacas grow wool and we can use their wool to build warm parkas to get us through the winter months. But that will be a project for the next episode. I think we're about ready to call it here. We've made great progress. We have a small base set up. We're ready for a raid if it should come. Uh, we are ready to harvest our first crop of rice uh, real soon. And in the next episode, I think we'll set up a pen and get ready to farm some alpacas. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy this series. Let me know if you have ideas or comments or suggestions. I'm open to all of the above. All right, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.